want to be here, neither do we. That's why we call it the obligatory. We talk about farts, food, mics, kids, $5,000 beds, girls, comedy, and Kermit's my all. Yeah, maybe the facts aren't right, but here's the obligatory podcast with Kermit and Mike. I feel like years and years and years from now, when you and I are no longer even speaking, and we've gone on to different parts of our life, yeah. that song's still going to haunt me. That, that song's going to haunt you? I think that song is like perfect for like, us. I have dreams from when I was a waiter or a bartender or a server, and I'll wake up in the middle of the night still thinking I forgot to bring something to a table. <laughs> it's like PTSD for like restaurant employees. I feel like when I'm 75, that song's going to play in my dreams. I'm going to wake up going, fuck, we got to do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but if you notice, uh, I've been stalling because I know you're over there trying to figure out what episode this is. No, I know what episode this is. Episode 91. Uh, what's going on? It's obligatory podcast with Kermit and Mike. If you didn't know what I episode. Did, I, I did. saw you I scrambling. Look, I'm yeah. looking at notes. Yeah, I saw you scrambling to get to your notes. <laughs> I, that's why I was pausing with the story about being old. <laughs> and now I threw all that make believe i created a way by calling myself out on it hey if you wanted to know you can watch us on youtube uh, at youtube slash uh stand up kermit uh you can also check our patreon and uh, check out mike's website mike hurley.com show dates of any you gotta i just yeah. read our notes yeah. allow show dates of any yeah funny enough uh i went to my calendar yesterday on my website and it was totally blank like not just blank but like a white box where the calendar usually is and uh, here's a little thing that fuck you Wix.com did to me. Uh, I've been on Wix since like 2010. And back when you had to put in the HTML code to yeah. load your calendar. Well, I guess for ease of use, they want to create an app that merges your calendar. But what they didn't do is inform anyone else like, hey, this is the new way we're going. So if you're on HTML before, you need to transfer over to this app. So instead, they just started doing that a few weeks ago. And I rarely go to my own website because it's linked up to my Google Calendar to populate it itself. And so I don't know how many days I was down without calendar. So, you know, to my throngs of fans out there who couldn't find out where I was because you actually use websites rather than social media, uh, that's on you. You use Wix? Wix.com. And you have control about your website? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Why? Oh, my gosh. Why? I really got to fix this. <laughs> Why? You don't like my website? It's very outdated. What do you mean? I can't even read the font. What do you mean? Well, it's in English, so no, I can see look, where you're having look, issues. Look, you gotta, you gotta try to move away from your face to read it all. Well, I think that's just how it does on no, like man. a. No, no. that's because you're you doing it on an iPad right now. Like, we gotta fix this. Right. Oh my goodness. All right. Speaking of fixing, man, it looks like you're on some. Uh, do we need to get you into some meetings or something? Why is What's that? Because like usually it's like you walk in here, we got a water, you're all perky, and uh, you come in with a bottle of water for me, which I appreciate, and you come in with like a stolen improv rocks glass. First off, it was given to me. I bought it. <laughs> okay. You just gave yourself two contradictory statements, which is a sure sign. You didn't even let me question you. That was the guilty side kicking yeah. in. I was like, no, I bought it. I bought it. I, no, I no. took it. I mean, I bought it. No, it was given to me. I bought it. <laughs> and I hadn't even questioned you yet. <laughs> Look, man, I got I bought it. I bought Dude, it. Dude, God forbid I ever do something criminally wrong and you're a witness <laughs> to that crime and they pull you in because I'm fucking done. Oh, shit. But. <laughs> So, yeah, he's sitting here with a rocks glass full of uh, Crown Apple because uh, not only does he want to take Ken Miller's uh, open mic. See, no. He also wants no. to be Ken Miller. No, you no. You are. You no. got like this I single was, white female I thing I was the Miller. original with the Crown Apple. And then, are you? Yes. First you take his open mic, then you take his drink. Now you're running around calling that by the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. I was the original with the Crown Apple. He used to call me a pussy because I wouldn't drink Crown by itself straight. And you had to have the crown apple. And I was like, no, I like crown apple. And he's like, no, that's for pussies. And I was like, just try it. And then he got hooked on it. Mm -hmm. And then he became the crown apple guy. And I was like, what is this bullshit? So I had to resort back to Coronas. Oh, and, and then the coronavirus. And then happened. the coronavirus. So now I'm with the Modelo. So now you're back to, now you're to, <laughs> you know, you can, you know, you can drink beer that doesn't have a Spanish name. It's fine. I like Big Wave. What's that? It's a beer. What's it taste like? Beer. So. I'm lost. It's just, it's just like a, it's a, it's a smooth beer. It tastes uh, kind of like it has like a. Does it have like that wheat barley? No, it's not like a, it's not a hoppy beer. I don't like a hoppy beer. No, no. no. 
So it's good. You're not a you're not a happy person. Oh, because we're <laughs> ah, like, yeah, you like that. Yeah, but so why are you drinking tonight, man? You're I just drinking. Are you stressed? Drinking. No, I'm not stressed. You know, you, you, if you drink out with your friends, it makes you a social drinker. If you if you're drinking at home, I'm with you. You're an I'm a social drinker. Uh, you're here. I'm drinking. I'm drinking water though. Yeah, but who cares what you're drinking? That doesn't matter. Spoken like an angry, aggressive <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> I'll drink what I, nobody tells me what you sound like my dad. I feel like I should cover my head before the right hand comes in. <laughs> Look, I'm Look, just I work you, hard. I'm just telling you, I like drinking when I'm in this. Like, look, you wanted me to talk today. This, this is how I'm going to talk. Or else I'll be tired and I'll fall asleep. I'm not complaining about you you're, talking. You're coming down on me. And and, I don't like the, and, I don't like the and, energy. And you know, alcohol is a sedative. So if you're looking at something to like, if you were doing coke after I complained about you not talking, I'd be like, good, he's helping the show. But you're telling me you're tired and that's why you're drinking. You ever and, did coke? What? You ever did cocaine? What? You ever did cocaine? What? I'm asking. What? Curious. What? Blink twice if you, you have. You know what? You're right. I shouldn't come down on you for your drinking <laughs> stuff. You should just go ahead and live your life, man. Who are you to answer to anybody? I'm just you curious. What? Have you ever did, you did cocaine? What? You did, you did, blink uh, twice if you did. <laughs> That's once. All right. <laughs> doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, I've done I've done coke. Um, really? Yeah. Like I've, a lot? I've done coke a, a handful of times if you have- A big, handful? If you have big hands. <laughs> You got you got you got meaty sized hands, buddy. Yeah. Oh shit. That sounds about right. When you got a nose like this, not too many people show that. Does coke. it burn? What? Does it burn? No, only if they've cut in like meth. Oh, I, I mean, oh, clearly your glass, or like Artie Lang. Lang. Or, yeah, yeah. You would think that poor Artie Lang guy. What happened to his nose? You would think a guy like that would pay the extra bucks, make sure you're getting good shit, right? He snorted glass. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know the story of that? No, I I know. Well, it's not just one time snorting glass. But the dude. one the one that really jacked up his nose? Yeah. Was no, no, that that comes from years and years it comes of doing years. coke and wearing down that nasal passage in there that collapses all Right, but he it. cut it up with glass inside yeah. because the girl crushed the cocaine with a salt shaker and when she crushed it the salt shaker broke and she didn't tell him and she still cut up the glass with the cocaine and then he went and snorted it and <laughs> And cut them all up. Yeah. Uh, well, if if you see a lot of guys who have been snorting over the years, uh, the, what's that soft partition inside your nose? Like inside, you know, it goes down like the center here. It's like that really. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyways, a lot of sports, a lot of athletes have that piece removed and replaced with plastic or something like that, just because it gets broken and damaged so easily. But yeah, that's the thing that gives your nose its shape. And uh, yeah, if you've been a Long-time user of any snorting, abrasive drug, uh, you wear that down. So. What's the middle part of the nose? Your nostrils. Well, no, those are things in the middle of your nose. Those are two holes called nostril. The nostrils pass. Nasal passage. Uh, nope. nope. Yeah, no, there's this. The thing that separates your nails, nasal passages. It's called a septum. There you go. That's yep. what I was looking for. There you go. That's what it is. So that's it. See? There you go. Learning something new about it. Knowledge. Anatomy. Knowledge. Doo-doo. Yeah, I never did that cocaine. Star, that, no, no. What have you done? Nothing really. You're so fucking boring. I'm. Yeah, I'm very. Have boring. Have another sip. You deserve it. Just, you, just liquor. Boring. Yeah, life. alcohol and and weed, which all been a horrible experience. I I don't care for weed at all. I have. I, this is what happens. Either a I go I go straight to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or b I throw up. Yep. Yep. And I'm, I'm like, where is the fun? Well, it's just funny because a lot of people nowadays are saying, oh. Um, it's always you got a bad bit you got a bad uh, batch yeah you don't know what you, you got a bad batch I'm yeah like, there's that but then the people who also say um oh uh, you know it settles my grandma's stomach or whatever or it deals helps prevent her nausea okay and i'm like that's fine because weed's always made me nauseous you know yeah so i end up just fucking throwing up or just falling asleep so yeah, it's not really see. fun let's see I, i've done alcohol of course uh cocaine uh Ecstasy, MDMA, and uh, do, 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 do. oh, acid a couple of times, but that's it. Jesus, white people yeah. party, man. Yeah. Well, it's early in the week. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get through the day somehow. Hey, if you can have a drink. But it is my house. While we do a podcast. Yeah, you know, somehow uh, doing heroin and the cops show up going, hey, this is my house, doesn't fly. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> Wait, why is that? Why could you do drugs in your house but you get in trouble because i think uh you can't be a responsible drug user that that should be a whole documentary responsible drug users yeah. like the guys who do drugs 
Yeah. And then still operate on a daily basis. Yeah, like I go to work, do my job, and then I come home, and then I shoot up. Right. And then I, I don't bother anyone. Right. I just do my thing. Right. I pass out, and hopefully I wake up in the morning. Uh huh. And they're like, that's great, but you're a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's against the rules? I... Why are you asking me? I'm, I'm asking. I'm just. I'm just wondering. Is that like you know what? It's kind of like drinking and driving. Like if you start drinking, you got to stay. I tend to think there's more people out there doing that than the people we see getting reported and busted for you know using drugs in public places. Because I think, I mean, if you really checked out the percentage of people who do it, I have no facts to back this up. But why start with facts on this podcast now? I think there's plenty of people that have experimented with drugs and done drugs and even still to this day, you know, they might not be doing drugs every day, but they party, quote unquote, every now and then. And uh, yeah, they all lead respectable lives. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about moderation. It's all about moderation, right? All about moderation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you do it in front of your kids, that's kind of bad, but you're still in your house. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it in front of kids. Did you? Did you hear that? Uh, this was sad. It was in the news. A woman's in jail because last week her five-year-old drank her bong water. Oh fuck! But she had been smoking meth out of her bong. <laughs> oh jeez! So the kid, so the kid died. Of course, the kid's dead. Yeah, because the kid saw this. You know, number. That's the other thing. If you're gonna do drugs, stop making everything you use to do drugs look like fucking toys to five-year-olds. You know, not everything has to look like the fucking caterpillar pipe. From but then Alice it's not fun, Wonderland. man. No, the <laughs> mind altering substances. You can't wait for those to kick in. You're like, no, it has to look cool in a black light. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you got to be cool, man, to do it. You can't just do something like mm-hmm. sad, mm-hmm. you know, paper straw hat bong. You got to do something wait, cool. This coming from the guy who's done weed once. Back the fuck up. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, but uh, d- didn't really get to do a podcast with you last week, but how'd it go? I didn't listen to it. It was a clusterfuck. Yeah, that's, was that what you labeled the show, clusterfuck? I, I labeled it 2,000 questions, because mm-hmm. that's you, what we did. All, all I did was ask questions from the book. Are you getting like a hiss in the back? Now I am. Is it because of the fan? Might be. Well, way to bring the show to a halt. Well, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Maybe we should have had someone here going technical. Oh, <laughs> who's that? Who's that? Too busy pouring yourself some whiskey to it's actually not, do the technical. It's not that big a deal. You can't even hear it, really. Yeah, you're good. Now it's in your head, but you hear The thing is the fan, man. It's, it's, all, it's all good. It's fine. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't be okay on Joe Rogan's <laughs> podcast, but it's okay for us. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Listen, So uh, we don't even know who listens so, to this podcast. No one ever tells us. No. No. So the uh, podcast, you just had a bunch of people come on. You asked them questions out of our 2,000 question book. Yep. And how'd they do? It was a... Clusterfuck. Yeah, it was a clusterfuck. We had a good one, but for the most part. You haven't listed the episode, I'm assuming. Nah, man. I've been too busy. <laughs> it's not bad. And if I can't hear my own voice, why tune in? It starts off It starts off with you know a couple of comedians crying, and then we yell at them, calling them losers, and, mm. you know, and then it's switching in and out. And then you realize some of them don't have anything interesting to say, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was filmed at the Improv while I was on stage. While you were uh, on stage. and James John. That show turned out to be great. It yeah. It was a fun show. And then, uh, let's see what I do. Oh, that Friday night, I went up to uh, Casadega, Florida, slash Lake Helen, to do a comedy show. And uh, it was this cool little venue. Have you been to Casadega? Casadobla? No. Okay. Here's something I didn't know until recently. Casadega is actually... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they'll have to look at the video, see why I'm laughing. Uh, Casadega is actually, it's up there by Deland, Deltona, okay? And it's actually, I guess in the late 70s, early 80s, some guy from New York, a psychic, moved down and made that a spiritual psychic camp for like, like-minded, like we're talking mediums and people who read palms and spirits and all this stuff. Yeah, I know what it is. What, no. Well, I'm explaining to maybe other people who don't understand. Oh, no, that, was, that was pretty direct besides, towards me. Besides the way you were, well, you know, they say play to the, your dumbest person in your audience, so I always have the luxury of looking across <laughs> to you, and if you look confused, I just assume someone else at home. That's my normal face, too. Mike. Don't, <laughs> don't shit on my normal face. Well, I thought it was your stroke face after two crown apples. <laughs> There's um, one. Really? Yeah. That's how I know you're drunk. But That's it's triple. The second one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, this guy started this uh, little community in the 70s, 80s. It turned into this psychic, you know, retreat, and they do a spiritual camp and stuff like that. And now you can go there, and you go to this old hotel they got down there, and they do palm readings and stuff like that. So this is where the show was. But also, 
uh, there is a cemetery there that's said to have something called the Devil's Chair. All right. Now, the Devil's Chair, here's the, here's the thought on it, the Devil's Chair. Uh, the rumor of it is that if you're seated on this chair at midnight, the Devil will come and speak with you. And it's also fabled that if you leave an open beer on it at midnight, when you come back in the morning, that beer will be empty. So I brought it up at the show I was doing. I'm like, oh, I heard you guys are home to the devil's chair. And we actually drove by the cemetery it was at. Did you go in it? No, it's all locked up, so you got to break the law to go hang out in it. But So um, what's the point of the myth if you can't even go try it yourself? Well, that's the thing. A lot of the cops there spend most of their time just keeping kids away from this fucking Jeez. chair. So, uh, so I was on stage. I'm like, I hear you guys are home to the devil's chair. And I'm like, I heard the story uh, that, you know, the devil's chair – if you're at the chair singing at 12 o'clock, uh, the devil will come and visit you. And I'm like, and that solves a big mystery for me because I always wonder where my girlfriend's dipping out to at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know what? And the fact that you leave an open beer on it at night and come back in the morning, it's gone. I'm like, that just sounds like a really thirsty groundskeeper who came up with a good thing. Yeah, or the <laughs> yeah. cops that are swatting the kids away. Right, right. This groundskeeper's just like, let me start this rumor that if you leave a beer here, you know, you should start being like, if you leave a 50 there, it will be gone in the morning. Ooh. <laughs> It'll turn into. But, but then, so the joke went well, but then at the end, some woman came up to me and she's like, do you want to know the real story behind the devil's chair? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I was a little nervous when you brought it up because all of us locals, we deal with people coming from all around the country to go to that chair and we have to that's why there's so many arrests and it's trespassing and like the cops patrol the area f frequently and it's like a really big deal that people keep trying to break in to be there at midnight right so she's like here's the real story there was a woman whose daughter died very young and she had them build that bench next to her grave so she had somewhere to sit and go visit with her so oh, like, it was a bench not even a chair yeah <laughs> And well, it just kind of really took the wind out of my sails. I'm like, oh, well, that's very sad. Very sad and uh, not <laughs> and, very eventful. And not very devilly at all. So wait, how did the devil's chair pop up? Just someone just made that shit up? Well, the, the chair slash bench that's there is made out of like red bricks, almost like the bricks you see on all those wannabe comedy back wall stages. Okay. And I guess it was built out of those just because that's what was available around the time. So it actually looks like the... Uh, hearth of a fireplace more than anything so when you think devil and fireplace and fire it looks like someone built a throne basically out of fireplace bricks gotcha. and apparently the devil's chair isn't just common to that cemetery especially apparently there's cemeteries throughout the u.s that have similar benches that look like maybe they're thrones for the devil so. <laughs> you gave into it though i Oh, you one hundred percent. I can see it. What that I believed in it? Well, before that lady bust your bubble about. No, I'm 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 not very ghosts and everything. You're else. not superstitious. You never play with a Ouija board. Oh, I've done that. I've done mm -hmm. that. I just I'm kind of just. I'm more scared of things in the real world than things in the fantasy. <laughs> I world. deal with this bullshit daily. Ain't so nothing. yeah, but that show went great. It was a, it was an awesome stage, man. If you ever get to go out there, it was so cool, the audience. Yeah, thanks for the great. invite, bro. Yeah, I would have yeah. went out there. Yeah, man. No, well, they, yeah, want, you know, no, they, right. they wanted good comics. Yeah, you know, I could have, I could have, I could have been a fluffer. The pay was. <laughs> Do you know what a fluffer is? Uh, yeah, it's someone that starts up the comedy show, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think you porn's hiring professional <laughs> fluffers. So you're like, hey, guys, I'm here with my best five minutes. They're like, oh, we're not filming you. <laughs> um, so then Saturday, I was at the Sunrise Theater in Fort Pierce, Florida, and that was a really great time. Uh, Casey Peruski, uh, a friend of mine from when I started comedy, actually just got signed on to do his dry bar comedy special. So he was featuring for me running his 30-minute set that they're going to be filming on Utah for the dry bar special. And that audience was great. A lot of people uh, made it out that I hadn't seen in a while. And then uh, Sunday, uh, so just to just to recap, last weekend I was with Louis Anderson at these amazing theaters How in many Florida. People? Oh, shit. Um, let's see. Just round it. Yeah. Let's see. Between two shows on Friday, a little over 1,000. One okay. show on Saturday, over 1,000 on that one show. So 500 on each show? 
Well, 500 on the two shows Friday night, then 1,000 on the one show Saturday because it's a bigger venue. Okay. So, like, 2,000 people last weekend. All right. Uh, then I went to the Improv on Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, featured for James John, and we probably had 150, 200 there. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, uh, the show in Casadega on Friday, uh, the building only seats 60 people, and we had 75 people there. Okay. So it was pretty. It, it was a full house for that Decent. little venue. Yeah, that's good. And then Saturday, the Black Box Theater was like 200 people in a beautiful theater. And then came Sunday. Yeah, where, where were we? we I, mean, were, I met you there. We were at the Lake Mary Pub mm -hmm. in Lake Mary, Florida, which is the oldest bar in Lake Mary. Oh, I didn't know that. And it shows. And it shows. <laughs> and it shows because you got to drive through the beautiful little Lake Mary downtown district. Uh -huh. And then you two blocks past the beautiful Lake Mary downtown district. And you pull up on this bar that looks like they're not very welcoming of people Kermit's color. <laughs> that was just fine. And I uh, just fine. they had a fire going on outside. Yep. Like a little fire pit. And then uh, there was less smoke coming out of the fire pit than smoke that was in that building. <laughs> Because it's one of those few bars in Florida where you can still fully smoke inside, right? Yes, sir. And uh, we got booked for this gig. And uh, we, it's it's definitely a quaint little bar show, but we've been told that it's been packed out, like 60 people and stuff like this. I think we had eight. Eight? Eight. And counting staff. Counting staff, eight. And I didn't know till the very end of the night that the older gentleman sitting at the bar was the owner of the bar, <laughs> the one wearing a Trump 2020 yep. pin on his hat. Yep. Yep. So, and a whopping eight, baby. Whopping that, eight. Officially, that's a sold out show there. But, but I will tell you this uh, we had a great show. <laughs> it was a good show. It was a good show. For all eight people, they loved it. <laughs> um, we had a great time. Uh, they opened up with. I guess the way they were running this show is every week they run a little competition beforehand and they yeah. have two local comedians go head to head to see who comes back for a paid spot the next month. And they had a uh, black gentleman. We had a very multi multicultural show. We had a tall um, Scandinavian host. Yeah. <laughs> and then the people in the competition were a young black comedian. And a young bisexual comedian. A bisexual comedian. And uh, and then you went up <laughs> and a little bit later. Good, yeah. And I think when I opened up my show, I'm like, I just really enjoyed watching you guys uh, watch that competition between a black man and a young bisexual comedian. Because when the host asked, who's the winner? You guys both said, neither. <laughs> They're both going to have hard lives. <laughs> and then I'm like, and then the Puerto Rican comic came up. And I've never seen a group of people collectively go, can we see the black guy again? <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> You're so full of shit. Yeah. They definitely didn't enjoy the bisexual comedian. That Yeah, I was outside while his set was going oh, on. Boy. And you came out and said, this guy just lost. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why? Was his joke that bad? He's like, he didn't even get to one. <laughs> he basically said, so I'm bisexual. And, Bam. They, and they said, next. Next. <laughs> They're like, nope. Uh, don't like that, boy. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Don't yeah. understand. No, boy. But it turned out to be a fun show, man. Yeah. And the audience was, the audience that was there was good. Like I said, I didn't know that was the owner of the club. And he came up to me afterwards and was just a great guy. I mean, we obviously differ on political views, but uh, he handed me. <laughs> if you give me the paycheck, that's, that's you're what good with about. me, buddy. But uh, all that being said, so that was the comedy catch up there. Yeah. But I got to tell you, man, uh, you are not going to be surprised by this. <laughs> Um, what am I not surprised? I I got into it at my kids' uh, Pinewood Derby race. Here we go. Here we go. Freaking <laughs> short temper Hurley. Nope. I was very calm. <laughs> okay. But let me tell you the facts. Go on. And let me just say right now, uh -huh. none of this will be exaggerated. Because it this, doesn't need to be. Cause this it's all, is all 100% factual. I believe it. And I just want to get, because I feel like kind of bad about this. So I want to see if I'm on the right side of history here. All right. So as you know, my kids are in scouts. Right. And what was it? Two years ago, I did my first Pinewood Derby with them. Mm -hmm. And my my son that year took first in his uh, his pack or first in his little den. And then he took second overall in the whole pack. Right. You guys cheated. Now we didn't cheat. All right. We're just good. All right. So then last year he came in once again, first in his den and like second overall in the whole pack. All right. So you got to remember when you're, I think they got lions, tigers, bobcats, wolf, bear, and then arrow of light. 
and then you become like a Boy Scout. So, you know, these are all age groups. Basically. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, so when I say he won in his den, that means this year he won for uh, bears. And then in his pack, you know, uh, would be all the age groups put together. Best times. So uh, my my oldest son's done pretty good. Last year, um, my youngest son raced a car, but he wasn't a scout yet. So this year was the first year of both my boys being official scouts. So they both got to race and take places. Uh, my youngest son I raced against another lion, whipped the kid five times in a row. And since there were only two lions there, bam, on Mackley, winner. You know? Okay. So uh, my oldest son, he got three races, won every single race. First two by two car lengths, last one by one car length. Great. Okay. Now, when there's a lot of scouts in a den, it doesn't mean they get to race each other. What they do is they all get three races, then it's all computer time, and then they average the time, and that's how they decide who gets what place. So you might not race a kid, but your time is up against his time. Well, you know? Okay. So at the end of the whole thing, you know, we do all that. And then uh, they go give the awards, and they give my youngest son his award for first place. Yay! For his division. And then they go to give the awards for my uh, oldest son's division, and they give the third place prize away. Then they call second place and call my son's name, and then they call first place and give it to this other kid. Now, here's where it gets weird. The kid they gave first place to, my son happened to go against in two races, and that kid came in third. In both those races, okay. my son coming in first. All right. So he must have had like a, an extraordinary time in that one race that my, he didn't race my son. He had to beat everybody by like 16 car lengths or something like that, you know. So but here's what happened. It's all done by computers. But when they went to calculate, the computers went down. So they had to go through the computer manually, pull out numbers and start totaling things up by hand. As soon as I saw pens and papers come out, dude, I worked restaurants for years. As soon as computers go down, you see waiters and waitresses trying to do math on 0.6% sales tax. Something's going to fuck up something. Right. So they do all the awards and everything, and I just go up to the woman who did the calculations. I'm like, of course, you got to fight with a woman. All right. Well, well here I went to I went to I went to the kid's mom first. I went <laughs> I went to my kid's mother first. What word? What letter did you use? C or B when you addressed let's her? Listen, listen. <laughs> I went to my kid's mother first because she goes to more of the scout stuff because I'm here with you on Tuesdays. You okay. Know? So I go up to her. I'm like, look, because I had videotaped all of my oldest son's races. And in the video, these cameras are fucking awesome, dude, because I can pause it and I see the digital readout. Yeah, it's called you, you finally upgraded your phone. Yeah, of all the lanes. Perfectly clear, you know, see all the readouts and everything else. Have the per Have the times of every racer. So I, I go up to my kid's mom. I'm like, look, I don't want to be that dad. But it's quite clear that my oldest son, you know, he got first. Right. It's quite clear. I'm like, I don't want to be that dad. Meanwhile, my kid's not upset. You know, he's a little thrown off because he got second. But he's not pouting about it. He's, he got his second ribbon. He's happy. We're ready to go get some lunch. And I'm just like, I feel like I should say something. Like, I know it's a kid's event. But I feel like, you know, if it's wrong, it's wrong. So I go up to the woman who did all the telling, and I'm like, hey, I think you guys made a mistake. She's like, sir, sir, it's an average of all three races. And that's when I was like, oh, this is the attitude we're having. Okay. So I'm like, yeah. Uh, and if you average all three races, the guy you gave first to lost twice to my son, so there's no way he got a number that's going to beat and re, you know, accommodate right. for those two losses. So she's like, sir, I don't – I'm like, who do I need to talk to? Because now I went from, oh, I don't want to bring this up to – Oh, no, we're getting to the bottom of this. So I pulled the scout master over and I'm talking to him and I make sure we're away from the kids. I'm like, look, I'm not looking to, I'm not, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to change anything. I just want to be able to explain to my son that something happened. You know, yes. I'm, I'm like, I'm just looking for answers. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the kid did put up some ridiculous number, you know? He's like, well, yeah, let's go take a look. So he goes over and the first thing he goes is, what's this? looking at her numbers. Some of the scouts have their three race numbers. Some of the scouts only have two races. Some of the scouts only have one race rent down. And she's like, well, the computer lost some of the numbers. So now on Ma automatically, there's fuckery afoot here. All right. <laughs> I can't believe this is going not down all, this hole. Not all these kids, not all these kids are getting rated up. You know what this is like? This is like a comedy competition. It's collusion. Yeah. Right. So then she looks at, he's like, 
how the hell? Because I named the kid that, you know, my kid beat two races that got first. He's like, how the... He, he's like, how the hell does, he, like, he broke his perfect decorum and said, how the hell? He's like, how the hell does he have a 2.2? Now, just so you know, the average race times coming in were like around three seconds, 2.9, 2.8. My, my oldest was putting up 2.6 and 2.7s, okay? He goes, how the hell does this kid have a 2.2? The kid he lost to twice. Right. So they put down, uh, the kid... The kid my son beat twice. So they put down a number that nobody achieved. So I'm like, wait a minute, you gave that kid a 2.2? But you gave another kid the overall award today for getting a 2.58. So does that make sense that they gave the fastest time award to someone for a 2.58? But on paper, you guys wrote down 2.2 for him. So now some serious fuckery is afoot. Okay. So then he's like, yeah, this is messed up. This is right. This is inaccurate. I'm like, I wasn't going to say anything, but at the beginning of the scout meeting, you guys had this whole honesty, integrity speech going on. So I figured, you know, forthcomingness and stuff like that. So he's like, no, no. this." He's like, well, I'll tell you what. Let me go talk to your son because he he went over to explain, hey, there was problems with the computers, everything else. He's like, congratulations, you did come up first and we want to give you first place at the next meeting. I'm like, no, no, there's because I don't want to take anything away from the other kid. There was no. You know, I felt bad because the other kid didn't do anything wrong other than building a shitty car that couldn't win a race <laughs> to save his life. Um, but but my thing is, if you gave this kid, who obviously probably lost that third race too, if you gave him the first place, that's not just a matter of my kid being pushed out of the pre- correct position. That means there's other kids out there that didn't get their proper awards, you know? And my whole thing is if we're doing this whole honesty, integrity, and you knew there was fucked up scores coming out, you guys should have just been like, hey, we either got to redo these races today or we got to reschedule another day. You know, some kids and some parents put a lot of time into this shit. Yeah, apparently you. Me? (laughs) Dude, when you're building a fucking racing dynasty, a dynasty, Kermit, I'm going back next year. I'm going to have the fucking Oakley wraparounds. I'm going to have, like, jackets, sateen are you finish. Gonna, are you gonna I'm going to have, gonna have Hurley Racing on the back with our numbers, and we're going to be chewing gum with our mouth open the whole time. The big league Just chew? Talking Just about, talking about the clocks. Talking about the clocks. Who's working the clocks today? Who's working the track? So you're turning into that guy. You know what? This is what they wanted. This is what they want? This is what they wanted. <laughs> you so it. here's the thing. I felt so bad about this. Okay. That I went home, and later on in the day, Aiden and I were just hanging out. My oldest, we were hanging out. And I'm like, hey, buddy, do you think I was wrong for going to your scoutmaster and saying anything? He's like, I don't know. And I'm just like. Yeah, of course he doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's a child. I'm like, I'm like, well, let me ask you this. If you actually won, which you did, do you want to <laughs> get the first place trophy, or would you rather – Nobody acknowledged you for winning. He's like, no, if I won, I want I wanted to be known I won. I was like, all right. And that just automatically put me into the, all right, I did the right thing. Right. But now I feel bad because I feel like I should blow the roof off this whole thing for the other parents who didn't have the nerve to stand up and point out bullshit when they see bullshit in something that preaches to be honesty and integrity and forthcomingness. Isn't it about sportsmanship and coming together and having fun? It is. And how are you going to do that unless you have honesty and forthcomingness, Kermit? You didn't want to be the bigger man and say, it's okay. It's okay that people cheat. (laughs) It's okay that people take what's not theirs from you and push you down and make you feel small. No, I didn't want to be that guy, Kermit. (laughs) You know know what it is? When you grow up up without learning how to win. Is that what it is? This was a win? You turn into me. You turn into... (laughs) Yeah, Early yeah. he's man. We don't get many wins. We got to fight for the ones we do get. And apparently, even when we deserve them, we still got to fight for them. So did your kid get the first place or what? Of course he got the first All right, place. just making sure. But I think they should have a whole ceremony. Oh, you want you want them to have like a red carpet? You know what? I, I'll put this out there for anyone listening. Yeah. My kid's car will go up against anyone. <laughs> he's not afraid to re-race. He's not, he knows what the numbers are. Here we go, fast. He and knows furious. what the numbers are. Look, I'll put this car against your kid's car and it'll win. Is that five ounces? Yeah, it's five ounces. Is that track legal? It's track legal. That's not five. That's too heavy. <laughs> that's way more. 
But I do like the camera on it. Oh my god, is that what that's for? Yeah, it's a it's a GoPro uh, Matchbox. Yeah. So you can put this on like a Matchbox track and like yep. watch it. That's fucking cool. <laughs> How come we're not using that? You don't have a Matchbox track. No, I don't. I got one at the house. There you go. You can take it home and play yeah. with your kids. <laughs> yeah. How would you? You press the button and it starts. That's it. It's all charged up. Yep. Oh, so I can put that down the track and bring yeah. it in and show you the video. Yep. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> you can see things through the. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys at home can't see this. Yeah, I was going to say. Can you, can you no see one that? can see that. How many GoPros do you have, dude? Uh, three. So this one. No, here. wait. Two. I gave one away. Oh, but those are. Oh. No, this is the one that's usually over there, right? Mm -hmm. I like that we just did 30 seconds worth of shit that people listening don't give No up. idea. You did that. What? You went into the, the car talk. Oh, with the little... Yeah, the little track? car, yeah. Yeah, because I think the other stuff was interesting. Right? No, it was. Just like, like this. The, yeah. They have another sip of liquor. <laughs> Wait, now, now I'm the asshole somehow? Okay. But now, I know you don't have kids. No. no. I know you can't build a Pinewood Derby car to save your life. No, no, not You'd at all. you probably do it in a 4.2. No, I'll just buy it on Amazon. Yeah. So uh, they do that, too. You got to watch out for those sons of bitches. Those parents. That are What's just, wrong with doing that? Those parents are just buying pre-made cars. Yeah. It's not the point. I don't got time for that bullshit with my kid. You don't, don't even have time to, to make a kid. <laughs> oh, I have time. I have plenty of time. She's just never here. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, no, be honest, though. Uh, you know, all joking aside, I know you're going to bust my balls about it later. Go on. But do you think I handle it appropriately? Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed you handled it that way. Because, like I said, no exaggeration, yeah. no threats or anything. Yeah. What would you have? You'd rather see, like, the typical Mike. I would typical Mike. Out. Yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted the crazy eyebrow twitching, screaming at the people about what's right, what's wrong, and... What you say is right, I, I, Mike Hurley. I, I treat people at the level they treat me. Yeah, they didn't treat you that well. So I'm the, the woman didn't. Yeah, and the you, woman. And, and you know why? Ten, you, you know why she tried to blow me off with the whole it's an average thing because she knew she had fucked up and she didn't want to go any further because the scoutmaster was nothing but right. Me. And you knew that, and I was hoping that you would have escalated it. Nope, nope. Just I took the hey, I need to see your boss. Yeah, type that's attitude. weak. But. That aside, that you didn't see, that I didn't flip out in front of my kid and treat him and show him improper ways to deal with people. Uh, do you think I should just kept my mouth shut or and walked out of there like, yeah, that's how it goes? Um, no. I mean, I don't have kids, so I mean, I'm pretty sure you. Um, no, because when I go to tournaments, I don't keep my mouth shut. Right. If you see something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I voice. Especially if you have proof. Right. And then even after they verified. That yes, I was correct. Yes, their numbers are off. I still kind of felt shitty bringing it up. I don't know why. Um, uh, because you didn't want to be that guy complaining. Yeah, but you need to be that guy complaining. But you know, I grew up in a sports family where I got dragged to my brother's baseball games, and you would see my dad like arguing with coaches and stuff. Yeah, like you're that. that guy now. But he would argue even when he knew it was wrong, and he's like, "Yeah, hey, it's part of the sport." <laughs> <laughs> you know that was the difference. That's that's. It part was like, day. were you blind? Were you cook off? No, no. You played it, baseball? No, I didn't. Both my brothers did. <laughs> my my little brother. That's right. You were in drama. My little brother was on the scout list for the Cardinals. Uh, my older brother had a uh, job to or a offer to coach at like a uh, community college. Like they're both baseball, baseball guys. And you. Yeah. Part of the drama team. Well, it's funny because when I open for Louie, that's my joke <laughs> that I do. And I, I go out and I go, uh, you know, it's good to be here tonight. Uh, just to let you know about me, I come from a very athletic family. My uh, father played football in college. Both my brothers played baseball, and I played uh, Hamlet. I'm like, yeah, I was a thespian, or as my father calls it, a huge fucking disappointment. Or a bitch. I'm like, but, you know, here I am opening for Louie Anderson, the beautiful blah, blah, blah theater. And my uh, baseball playing brothers working third shift at Wendy's in Fort Pierce, Florida. So, but you didn't have a glory day. I what do you mean I didn't have a glory day? As a child, why not? Because you didn't hit that home run. You didn't score that touchdown. Dude, I played hockey. You played hockey. Roller. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice save on that one. Dude, I was an amazing roller hockey player. I could have gone pro if they had. Pro you know how to roller hockey. skate. Roller blade. I gotta see this. But yes, I can roller skate too. You can still roller blade right now. I can. I can go backwards too. Shut up. I'm the man. I'm rollerblades. Do you do the little Chrissy Crossy? I can. 
Oh, I gotta see this. What you mean on quads? That's what we call roller skates. What are quads? Oh, that's <laughs> quads are when you got the four wheels side by side, traditional roller skates. Okay. Uh, inline skates are when they're all just in a row. You now do both. Yeah, I can't do I can't do like the disco thing on quads, but I can do crossovers and crisscrosses with rollerblades. Oh my god, I gotta see this Homer Simpson. Episode. Can you roller skate? No, not at all. Let's go roller skate. I, I mean, I'll I'll break my tailbone. Do you need but to okay. get that walker out I, there. Yep. Be that yep. Kid? I don't know how to skate. So if you're listening, we're organizing the first ever official <laughs> obligatory podcast skate party, and nobody's gonna show up. You know what? <laughs> It'll be fine because it will be like if if you're listening to this podcast. When they do couple skates, it's going to be an empty floor with all of us sitting on the side while they play Bon Jovi. And then when they do single skate, it's going to be a bunch of dudes out on the floor while they play Bon Jovi. Yeah, pretty much. They don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know where there is a skate ring around here in Florida. Oh, I'm sure we can find one. I'm pretty sure there are some, but yeah, that's got to be gross, though, right? Because they don't clean up those skates. Yeah. You got to use their skates, right? They do the same thing with bowling shoes. They yeah, just they spray, spray that it. stuff in there. Uh, I, think, I think they ran out of that stuff 20 years ago, but they just make a big thing out of looking like they're spraying something well, it's, in it's there. It's supposed to be just Lysol spray. Yeah, yeah. So uh, speaking of couples, uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, huh? <laughs> really? That's what we call a segue, kids. <laughs> Valentine's Day right around the corner. Yeah, what about it? Uh, you doing anything? Nope. Nope. You bartered the ring. You're like fucking off the hook. That's it, baby. That's it. Dude, every time Valentine's Day comes, every restaurant jacks their prices up. And then for, for some reason, there's a wait for more than 40 minutes, which is ridiculous. I used to uh, have a buddy who told me, he's like, we were both servers. Mother's Day is like the busiest day of the year for restaurants. Valentine's Day is a close second. Uh, but he used to tell me all the time, he's like, you know what I hate about Valentine's Day? And we were working at like uh, Red Lobster at the time. He's like, Valentine's Day pushes all the restaurants up a notch, you know, like he's like the people who usually eat with us, they might go out to like, uh, what's that steakhouse, the Benihana oh, or okay. Kobe. I was say he's like the people that usually eat here will probably go at Benihana or Kobe, Kobe. You know, the people we got on Valentine's Day, the people that usually take their girls to like Denny's, <laughs> you know, it's like, no, baby, no Denny's tonight. Tonight's special. <laughs> We're going to uh, Chili's. Ch- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Chips are free. And, if you and, sit at the bar and he's not wrong. That's exactly what the you see your clientele. You don't get your regular clientele on Valentine's Day. You get the people that are used to dining a little bit lower coming up because this is their big night out with you, you know? But uh, speaking of restaurants, another segue uh, that are doing Valentine's. You know what Hooters is doing for Valentine's Day? You guys look at some titties. That's every day at Hooters. Except there's some Hooters that should be called asses because there's no tits. Yeah, you know that? Same thing with Wing House. Mm -hmm. Like, well, Wing House isn't what you expect at Wing House. What do you mean? What I expect? Well, they call it Hooters, supposedly named after Al, but it's another name for boobs. Tits and ass for the whole family. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I do enjoy their chicken fingers. Um, but uh, Hooters is doing a promotion where if you come in on Valentine's Day and tear up a picture of your ex, then they'll give you an additional 10 wings for free if you buy an order. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm going to go print out a photo of my ex mm-hmm. and waste my time. Mm-hmm. Within the 10 free wings. Yeah, 10 free wings. I heard they did something like that, too, where that you uh, you buy a fish or something, and they'll feed it to a gator at Gatorland. Oh, really? Yeah. You name the fish after your you ex. You name the fish after your ex. And Those then... are the same people that are like, voodoo's the devil work, but this seems like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think Burger King's doing that, too, where you bring a photo, and they give you a free Whopper. I'm like, dude, just buy the fucking Whopper. How bad would you feel if you actually did that Gatorland, named a fish your ex, and then she got ate by a real gator? Now, that would be awesome. Because <laughs> I'd be like, I'm Make, a psychic. After that, every Everybody shows up the next day like, well, you know, want to give this a shot. Yeah, there'll be a lot of names going in those fishes. I'll be that's, back at Gatorland. That's <laughs> right. Been paying Al Melanie for six years. She's been living with that dude for five of them, but they won't get married so she can keep feeding off my fucking nipples. Heckle me again, Mike Hurley, on stage, you <laughs> fuck. Hey, all I said, <laughs> all I said Sunday was when you say, I got to get out of here in a minute. I said, about time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. We were all just ready to heckle each other. We were just like staring at each other. Like, Let's it, was, it, it reminded me of a Jack's Pub night from back in the day. Jack's um, Pub. But yeah, so Valentine's Day, Hooters, bring a picture of your ex, tear it up, get 10 extra wings. There's some people out there that are like, man, I might just break up with my girlfriend just to get those 10 wings and not realizing you can just tear up a photo that 
of anyone. And by the way, Hooters wings are not the best. No? Who's got the best wings? Who's got the best wings? Good question. Um, I'm not a wing guy. You're not a wing guy? Not a wing guy. What? Just not a wing guy. Why, you don't like the bone? Just too much work to get the little meat. It's not a little meat, man. You're going to the wrong place. Mm, I don't know. I've been you don't like sucking on the bone? I've been impressed. Not as much as you. <laughs> I, I I clean my wing, baby. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I used to do that move. Someone taught me. A uh, guy I played roller hockey with, believe it or not. Uh, you know, in cartoons, how cats will take a fish, put it in their mouth, and pull out just the bones? Yep, that's he, what I do. Yeah, he really? Because that's why he did. He showed me. You can't do it with drumsticks. No, you do it with the wing. But you do it with the wing, and you, you take it, you push it down a little bit. Yep, first. you detach the little one. Yeah, and put it in your mouth, and you yep. pull it out, and it's just the bone. Clean. Clean. Well, you take the bone out completely. And he then, didn't do that. He he'd pull out like the two pieces. Yeah, but then it gets caught in between the crotch area of the wing. Not with this guy. Oh, Apparently, that guy's you're like, doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. There, your girl's gonna leave you for my <laughs> for, guy, for, who knows how to work the gap. <laughs> for, for wingman Jerry over there, <laughs> his just, name was Mike Simberlin, <laughs> and he was a goddamn American hero. And where is he now, huh? I think he's working. Sucking wings behind the corner of Aldi, huh? I think he actually worked the deli at Lion King. There you go. <laughs> at Food Lion, you mean? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Lion King. I was like, what? That's okay. <laughs> what was the place on the way over here? Oh, yeah. I just I had a buddy in college who worked at the um, Cheesecake Factory. And I accidentally said, well, oh, you got to work tonight at the Cheesesteak Factory? He's like, no, I work at the Cheesecake Factory. He took it all seriously. So for like years, I called Cheesecake Factory Cheesesteak Factory. Oh, you can, yeah. Just, just the Urkham. You still over at that cheesesteak? Fuck it. You take it that serious? Jesus. And then I get into him. Like, he's like, it's the Cheesecake Factory. I'm like, dude, you act like you make the fucking cheesecake. Do you make the cheesecake? No. Then what's the big deal? I'm like, <laughs> hey, he, man. he worked the grill. I'm like, so it's more likely you make cheesesteak than cheesecake. He's factory till death, bro. Cheesecake. Yeah, the tattoo with yeah, the butcher had, knife. He has a big Cheesecake Factory logo on his yeah. arm. So uh, here's something funny uh, that came across the news feed. There it is. In Connecticut. Um, in Connecticut. Uh, dude, you've, you've had, have you always, like we've talked about Chuck E. Cheese before. You did Chuck E. Cheese, of course. And you worked at uh, Best Buy. Mm -hmm. um, now, we, we've talked about your sordid history of maybe you um, – appropriated some things while you were working for them what do you mean it's a big word for steal yeah, yeah. oh okay yeah yeah i, <laughs> yeah, I did that i stole, I stole a lot of shit i like how you got offended like what do you mean appropriate steal oh no no i stole a fuck ton yeah yeah that <laughs> word i'm comfortable with i was saying i never appropriated nothing <laughs> um so uh wh what's the most you ever think you stole like money put a number on something you've taken like well i never stole actual cash no, no, that's why I'm saying monetary worth of something. Um, and just before you say anything, I want to remind you: this podcast is purely hypothetical fun entertainment. And yeah, uh, and I the, never stole those and, Xboxes. And the statute of limitations has long passed on any of these crimes, alleged crimes. Yeah, I never stole an Xbox. Yeah. Or... So just give me a number. Give me a figure of what you think your one-time heist. Was. Big heist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. I was thinking about the car radios. No, not the car radios. Maybe the Xbox? No. Yeah, you know what? I think the Xbox is going to win. And, and what's the sticker price on that? At least it was like 400 at the time. 400 at the time. That's not that's not bad. That's yeah. pretty respectable. Because like car radios are probably like 120, maybe 200. Okay, because people had CDs and you were still stealing the cassette ones. No, I was just ripping up the whole CD player right out the car. Oh, but not at work. No, 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 no. I used to steal. I used to steal. Uh, <laughs> I used to rob people's From the cars. the common man? Yeah, I didn't give a shit. Why? Because I was trying to be cool, bro. How'd that work out? It for didn't you? work out well. I got my ass whooped by my father the next day. So bring back all those radios. <laughs> no, no. Well, I gave them back to the, not the people. The guy I was stealing for, I was a dumbass. <laughs> you were stealing for someone else. Uh huh. You you were like someone else's stealing bitch. I used to yeah. I used to steal. I used to steal car radios out of people's cars, and then like an idiot, I kept the duffel bag in my trunk of my car, and then my dad took my car for a surprise 
oil change and cleaning. And he cleaned out my car. And then when he opened the trunk, he found the bag full of stolen car radios. And did you tell him you had found that duffel bag on the side of the road and you were... Okay, he ain't that damn dumb. <laughs> and then mm. uh, he slapped the shit out of me. Mm. And he told me to get this shit out of the car mm. and get rid of it. And then mm. that's what I did. Get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? You I gave, gave it, it to the guy. And I was like, I'm done. And you didn't make any money? No. You were a damn horrible dog. criminal. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. I think you should apologize to that, but you stole the radios. No, I'm not apologizing. You should. I'm a fucking thug. You took the radio, man. <laughs> did you break windows to do it? or did you? No, nah, I, I was Slim Jim it. Yeah? Yeah, no, I never broke I never broke anyone's windows. I was Slim Jim it. Mm-hmm. And then I would uh, take a screwdriver, you stick it in there, and pop, mm-hmm. pop that out, rip it out. Yep. Uh, Hypothetically. No, 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 the hypothetical. I'm telling you how I how you steal a car radio. Yeah, but you never actually did it. No, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I'm glad I gave up law studies for comedy because <laughs> people like you, I'm like, I'm trying to keep you from the chair. I'm blinking. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> okay, so but at work, at work, like you would say, the Xbox was the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I mean, I guess if you want to count Chuck E. Cheese, like. I would, I would time, yeah. Yeah, like like I would like eat food with not yeah, paying. Yeah, that's a, that's common, right? Yeah. Like you know, like I'll make myself a damn pizza and mm-hmm. like I'm not paying for this shit. So, um, this guy, what he did, is, I like how I just in, I just incriminated myself on. I tried podcast. to I tried to help you, man. I tried. Hey, I said I didn't steal any of that shit. I was just joking. These are all, all right. jokes. Yeah, this is a sketch. We got the script right here. Jokes. So this guy in Connecticut gets hired by a gas station to be the overnight clerk. First night working, steals seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, no, I'm not that big time. Worth of cash, cigarettes, and lotto tickets. Okay. So the way the owner found out is he's got an app that on his phone that links into the cameras at his shop. So he goes, and the first thing he notices is there's no employee. Okay. So then he shows up and realizes the guy took like four hundred or four hundred and fifty boxes like cartons of cigarettes all the lotto tickets and all the cash and then he was smart enough to do this next step he took his own employee file so this guy had just been hired right no paychecks processed yet right went into the back office pulled his own employee file with his name address so everything that could be used to track him okay down. okay and i'm none- liking this guy's <laughs> style so far and none of it had been processed yet well, I understand is they do have a photo of him uh, from the security camera. Now, you would think the guy would have just gone back and also grabbed the security camera tape of himself taking this. But they have, like, the perfect photo of him looking right at the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even while all this, cops have been unable to locate this guy. And part of me is just going, genius. Wait, so how did he get caught? He hasn't been caught yet. Oh, <laughs> Uh, he's on the run with lotto tickets. And, and Just doing those scratchers. Just scratching it off. Nice. Yeah. So uh, that takes some. That's a guy. You know, that's the employer's fault for not vetting these people. Because when you hire a guy and you're like, hey, man, I know you're 40. Because he looks like he's my age. He's like, I know you're 40. Uh, I need you to work overnights at my gas station. I'm paying you barely minimum wage. And uh, you won't have anyone else working with you. You're totally unsupervised. And we also live in this high crime area. Uh, and uh, there's no benefits and no holidays and no days off. And you're working every weekend. When you have a guy that you pitch that to and the guy goes, sounds amazing. When can I start? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, he's ready to rob. Yeah, he's ready to rob. You want the guy who pushes back and complains. Yeah. You're like, here's a lifer. <laughs> You know, but a guy who's just like six fifty an hour, no benefits, forty eight to fifty hours a week, and no days off, and the shittiest shift on the schedule. <laughs> Give me the keys, boss. <laughs> yeah. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to make you proud. Genius. Mm-hmm. Where was this at? Florida. This was Connecticut. Oh, okay. Now this happened uh, not too far from Connecticut in Milwaukee. Uh, there's a gas station owner who's in court right now in the great state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And the reason for that is because he allowed a porn to be videotaped in the snack aisle of his convenience store. Ooh, what company? So, Well, that's the thing. 
<laughs> How much they pay him? The for that? the gentleman in the porn uh, has himself on his Instagram page. Oh, the amateur, gross. States that he is an up and coming rapper uh, slash, slash amateur porn star, uh, and I think it should be the other way around. I think it should be amateur rapper, up and coming porn star. Hi -yo. Hi -yo. So this guy in Milwaukee, this up and coming rapper slash porn star, uh, puts up all his videos on you porn of him having sex in public places around Milwaukee. So here's the thing. He went and filmed himself having sex with a girl in this gas station. Now, this is where the issue comes into play. Okay. It would only be a problem uh, if he got busted or stopped or something like that. But where people are trying to take this gas station owner's license away is they can see in the reflection of the cooler the gas station owner looking on and watching the porn ah, he got being caught. made without stopping while another employee because another video surfaced where one of his employees actually started videotaping the, the act so yeah, he made a Instagram. porno of the porno yeah so, oh, so it was like multi-angles yeah so the whole issue here is they had more cameras than our podcast going um <laughs> the whole issue here is that not so much that the guy was having sex like that's one separate issue but that the gas station owner saw this happening and totally not only didn't stop it but was like go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah go ahead uh, you can do it in the chip aisle that's so, a well that's the thing they got him in court and he brought as one of his co-defendants because they're trying to take his license away for the gas station so the guy in the porn actually shows up oh and, wow what a gentleman and what's what's funny is they're questioning the guy and they said, so uh, you were basically filming a porno in the snack alley. He's like, well, well let, me, let me stop you right there. Let me correct you. I would have infect between the thun chips. <laughs> and <laughs> the sunflower seeds. <laughs> I really hope he tells like that. <laughs> Dude, if you see a picture of this guy... You just you ever look at someone and know exactly what they sound oh, like? Oh, one hundred percent. This is what this guy sounds oh. like. So in the middle of this trial, his whole issue with the trial is like, don't call it the snack aisle. It with the thun chips and the thun flower thieves. Wow. Yeah. What a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, Showed man. up to court too. Dude, if you pull up the picture, I'm pretty sure it's the first. I'll, I'll show yeah, you show it to me later. I'll put it on the website. Yeah. So yeah, man. Um so it's been an interesting week in gas stations. Yeah. And uh, Valentine's Day, you can head on over and have your uh, ex's photo torn up and get some free wings over at Hooters nah, there. Nah, man. I'm going to get my fiancé pregnant, bro. That's what I'm going to do for Valentine's. Do you know if you get your fiancé pregnant at one of several participating hotels, you get free hotel stays for life if you get pregnant on Valentine's Day? Which hotel? It's, there's, uh, it's probably some, like, Garbage ass hotel that you stay in when you go to when you go do your comedy, <laughs> dude. I stayed in some fucking nice hotels too. Well, I know recently, but you had some horror and stories. And the week too. before, I was in the worst. Games. Yeah, exactly. But that's how comedy goes. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it is. No, it doesn't. That's dude. I do comedy. That's how it goes. No, but you have the choice of getting a nice hotel at least. The, the venue, not so much, but the hotel. You don't always get a choice in a hotel, dude. Yeah, you do. No. Yes, you do, dude. If you go, if I talk to you and I go, you're going to offer me a hotel, and I go look at the hotel, I'm like, that looks like garbage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, I'm not staying there. No, I'm just going to stay somewhere else. With what money? The money in my pocket. So you're going to spend more money on the hotel and your living arrangements than what you're getting paid to do the gig? Oh, see, I don't, I don't, that's why I don't work for nothing more than $500 a gig. So. You don't work for nothing more than $500 a gig, so you, wait, you don't wait, take wait. any pay over $500? You sound like someone who doesn't do professional comedy gigs right now. <laughs> no, I don't at all. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know your DJ press play gigs give you hotel stay, right? They don't. <laughs> yeah. So basically, would you say you're talking out of your ass on all of this? Yeah, right? yeah, right okay. now. Okay. All, right, all right, right. All right. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> what I like to do when presented with facts is tell that person with the facts to shut up. <laughs> I'm a comedian. Are you, though? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you, though? I like to think I am. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Really? I, I think you're a comedian. Hey, there's that's just, a nice thing you said to me. There's different levels of comedians. Oh, yeah? What level am I on? You're on the level that you make really good flyers. Oh. 
No, you're you're good, man. You're solid. You what about my jokes? But no, your jokes are good. You're on the. Why level. your eye twitching? <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like. Calm down over there. I don't know. When, Did you just have a stroke when you said that? Whenever I lie, I say things like "whenever I lie." <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, finish your damn sentence, you jerk. I'm just saying, where you're at in your life, with your situation with work and everything else, you can't take off on the road for a week or two at a time, which is sometimes what you got to do to build up. Because no one offers me. No, I don't think that's because my co-host for two years here mm-hmm. at the obligatory podcast never mm-hmm. offers me any gigs. I offer you gigs. Never offer me gig guys. I offered you. No, nope. but it, you can't take off most days. You don't know that. I you, do. Know you gotta that. ask. You can't even come across. You get. You drive the bus that takes the kids to karate <laughs> school. <laughs> right. That sounds so bad. You drive the bus. It is to pick up the kids. That, that's who's gonna pick up the kids, you loser. Isn't that a hundred percent accurate? <laughs> Like you can't get off Monday through Friday because you gotta go pick. Oh up dear tickets. Lord, no! Yeah, that's a lot of so, money going out so, the window. So you can only tour during the summer. Yeah, and that's the other thing—the money issue of it. Well, and you can't even oh, do man, it then because summer too. You can't even do it then because you got mm, summer camp. That right? money is fucking yeah that's summer. So you'd have to take a pay cut to go be a professional on the weekend, and you're already making shit. Ugh! Oh, to take a pay cut. Mm-hmm. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. See, no. you're like, you're like, I could go, I could afford to go on the road if you're getting paid what Preacher gets paid a show. Right. But to get paid what Preacher gets paid a show, you got to go on the path of doing all these other gigs first before you get there. Uh, or you can become like internet famous and then. Uh, yeah. Can I just go viral right now? Can you? We've been trying to figure that out. Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out. We got to post our shit on World Star or something. We got to fight more. We got to fight more. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Where are we at? One on one. Hey, hey, we filler busted it for a full hour like nice. pros. No, it wasn't. We actually had some uh, decent conversation this time around. He I'm not, calls it decent. Unlike my last sit-in over here, where I just apologized profusely for recording the whole. It thing. wasn't that bad of a podcast. Go ahead, pick one. a number. Are we doing a number book? I figure we'll end with numbers. We'll today. end with numbers. Or actually, uh, let's see. This weekend uh, coming up. I got uh, Friday. I'm doing a show at the Florida Hotel. Uh, Friday afternoon, some convention or something like that, doing a little Valentine's 15 minutes type bullshit. There you go. Yeah. What you got this week? I'm at? Hey, I'll be at Side Splitters on Sunday. Oh, will you really? With Pedro Lima doing a guest spot at 6 p.m. Is he in ha- Tampa? Is he at Lion the Sunday show? Yeah. Really? Maybe I'll ride out with you. My ass, you are. You can take my spotlight. No, I wouldn't take your spotlight. I take the spotlight that shines brighter after you. See that that hurts. Why does that hurt? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. As Pedro, yeah. they'd have to raise the spotlight up. Uh, all, all right, right. All you, right, you right, do right, the right. damn short jokes. Pick a number. Pick a number. One through a thousand. Let's make this short. Uh, one hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. That's gonna be bad. Watch. I should have picked a higher number. Oh no, this is actually decent compared to the ones we picked last week. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what profession do you think is the most undervalued today? Oh, the guy that cleans up spooge after a porno shoot. That is very undervalued for that man. Yeah, what well, do you think he deserves to be getting paid? Oh, at least three figures. Mm-hmm. An hour. An hour. <laughs> so more than the whole production. <laughs> yes. That guy, that guy or girl, and uh, who else? Who else is low paid? Mm. Would you? Mm. Would you if you could afford to? Janitors, man. Janitors at at uh janitors they're at um custodial engineers. Thank you very much. Okay, they're janitors, but the, <laughs> any any janitor that attends or has to clean any kind of festivals mm-hmm. and clean the porta potties and all that that they're the they're, that's the worst. Okay, uh, when you said the guy cleaning up splooge, if you could afford it, would you hire someone to clean up your splooge just on a daily basis? Well, I don't get that much splooge to go around. I like mean, that. just you know, you're in the bathroom in the shower, you take care of yourself. I mean, do you hate cleaning up other people's splooge? No, man, I gotta. I keep you don't it. hang. You don't hate cleaning no, up I other s- people's. I splooge? save my stuff. In Is a... it just your splooge you hate cleaning up? No, I don't clean it up. You so right now it's just dried on your belly. No, it's in a Mountain Dew bottle. I keep them all together. Shit! I wish <laughs> you would have told me that before I chugged the gallon of Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, okay, that's disgusting. All right, your turn. Ask me one. Okay, uh, what number you want? Um, oh, you're supposed to highlight. That way we never re, re, yeah, re go so back. So you, you had 110, right? I had 110. What are all these numbers you're writing down? 
What? Where are all these little sound bites? Yeah, little come on, clippets man. Clippets to make me sound like a moron. Well, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You, I will say, in all fairness, you do a good job of equally making it look like you're a moron too. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> That's the closest thing to a compliment I have for you. <laughs> All right, what, what, and you're writing that down too. What, what number you want, you son of a bitch? <laughs> okay, um, let's go with six six six. I think we did that one already. Mm. Okay, then let's go with six six seven. I'm looking for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did six six six, and it was, it was, really, was it? it's really bad. What was it? What do you think airlines should offer on flights that they currently do not? Blowjobs. We said blowjobs. Yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah, this. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. remember this. Yeah, I so. Think so. I got to read my six, six, seven. All right. Well, I already know the answer to this one and it's kind of whack that we're going to ask it, but, uh, what is meaningful to you? No, oh, geez. Why don't you just answer that for me? It's your kids. Yeah. That's see. All. That's easy, man. That's easy. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. Let's get another one. Let's get another one. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Okay. Well, um, uh, let's see. We got a, we got a two, we got a four and what's two, the first number I read four. off this right here. Uh, there's a nothing. So let me see a number off this. There is two, four, nothing. I need one more number. Oh, off my, my gym membership. I don't use six, two, four, six, two, four, six. Yeah. Oh my God. This is the worst. Oh my God. What? Have you ever made your own ice cream? No, but I really want to. You know, that's, that's white people like making their own stuff like butter and ice cream and like soy sauce and oh, shit like that. Okay, settle down, Coquito boy. <laughs> right? Is that how you say it? Coquito? <laughs> Why you say it with such anger? Because you're like, oh, white people this, white people that. Yeah, every Christmas season you're like, guess what we're doing? <laughs> we're making Coquito. White people love making things, and then, like, your whole family history is making things because you're poor dirt farmer. Hey! I'm sorry. That was what too the far. Hell, too far. That was too far. You guys never owned farms. Yeah, we never. You just took other people's And land. we didn't play in dirt. What? I've seen pictures of Puerto Rico. It's more of a water park. Well, now it is with the earthquakes. So it's just a big piece of shit rubble. Yeah. Uh, it's ugh. been bad since the hurricanes, right? Everything. We are yeah. a natural disaster island. Mm. That should be a reality show. Natural, Natural disaster, disaster Island. Island. <laughs> if you can survive. That's it. It's like Survivor. But where are you putting me? Some third world country? Close. You wish. Puerto Rico. You got to deal with crazy Boricuas. And <laughs> net- Whoa, what the hell? Uh, what? what? After, after everything That's you do on That's a Puerto Rican show? voice. <laughs> You're right. Yours is better. Yeah. Jeez. But I mean, in my defense, you're Puerto Rican. I thought they sounded pretty similar. Well, you kind of made it sound like Al Qaeda there. <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't it Al Qaeda? Uh, no, it's not. No, no La Qaeda. No, 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 no. The Qaeda. There's no Al Qaeda or La Qaeda. That's what you said, Al Qaeda. No, no. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. <laughs> We're gonna end this episode. Okay. <clears throat> well, that was episode. 91, I almost said it, wrong number, 91, uh, as always, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Podbean, iHeartRadio, uh, Instagram, Facebook, MikeHurley.com, look at all his tour dates coming up, and uh, that's pretty much it, I'm gonna go, Mike, you got anything to say? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>